This short video explains how the FactorChat Android app handles dead zones. Dead zones are areas of the warehouse or the production floor where Wi-Fi is sporadic and we are liable to lose connection at any time. We're going to cover the app to the server communication, what happens when the request to the server is broken, and what happens when the response from the server is broken. In the normal flow, the operator scans in an item number or some information on the scanner and a request is made to the server. The server then validates the data that has been entered and sends a response back to the device and the device then populates the screen with the information it has received from the server. In certain circumstances the request to the server is broken. In this case the operator will be presented with a message which says connection has failed, please retry after a few seconds. The operator will then click on the OK button and it will take them back to the previous screen and they'll be able to initiate the request again without any danger. Of more concern is where the response from the server is broken. In this case the operator will initiate the request to the server server will then process it and send a response back to the device. If at this point the device has lost Wi-Fi connection, we don't really know what has happened, whether the request was successful or not. So we'll be presented with a message which says connection lost, retry or sign off. When the user clicks on the, the retry button, the app would again try to re-establish a connection to the factory track server. If it doesn't connect again, it will present the same message back to the user and the user can continue to retry or can sign off. If eventually it gets a connection back, the system will check to see whether the last request that was sent to the server was an update or not an update. In other words, if we had just been scanning in an item number and it was trying to check whether it was a valid item, the user would be presented with the menu and could start the transaction again. If, however, it was in the middle of doing an update transaction, in other words, it was performing the receipt, or it was performing the pick, or it was performing the stop movement, instead it will present a screen which says whether that transaction was successful or not. In this case, the transaction was successful, so the user can proceed on to their next action. They don't need to do anything. If, on the other hand, it came back and said the transaction was unsuccessful, then the operator could go back to the menu and perform the transaction again and know that it has not already been performed. This avoids the danger of performing the same receipt twice or the same pick twice or the same movement twice. We want to check that the previous transaction was successful or not. If it was successful, we need to do no further action. If it was unsuccessful, then we need to start again and repeat the transaction. Alternatively, if the operator clicks on the sign off button, then it will just take them back to the login screen. In these circumstances, they will need to contact their supervisor to find out whether the transaction that was going through was successful or not, and determine whether they need to repeat the transaction or whether it has actually gone through successfully. The supervisor has access to a form called the Current Transaction Workbench form, which will, sh which will allow the supervisor to determine whether the transaction that was being performed had gone through successfully or not.